So let's go ahead and solve a example that has to do with orthotropic material behavior in a more practical scenario, uh, which is a fibrous composite plate. So this is a intrinsically um, 2D scenario. Um, the plane of the fiber is going to be indicated with x, y, and the outer plate direction, namely z, is going to be omitted. So I have a plate, and within a epoxy matrix of plates, so I'm going to exaggerate the size of the fibers, but there are fibers running, and those fibers will have uh, directions as such and, and so on okay. so and these are carbon fibers which is embedded into a epoxy matrix and we know, we already have talked very briefly about the fact that the amount of fiber you put in is important. And here it is noted in this problem that you put 60% volume fraction of carbon fibers. And so once this information is given to you, in your book there is a table of material properties from which you can extract all the relevant material constants that are associated with this analysis. I'm only interested in the xy plane, so there is going to be a Young's modulus in the x direction. There's going to be a Young's modulus in the y direction. There's going to be a Poisson ratio that is associated with the xy direction there is going to be a shear modulus associated with the xy direction. So we already expect that the um, modulus along the x direction should be eventually um, smaller than the modulus along the y direction. So let me just, because I have my numbers slightly different, let me call that direction to be the x direction and this direction will be the y direction. Okay. So along the x direction I expect where the fibers run along, uh, I expect a higher shear mod Young's modulus and that is indeed the case, 76 GPA and EY is much smaller and it's a value that is closer to the Young's modulus of the epoxy matrix and the shear modulus is 2.1 GPA and the Poisson ratio nu xy is provided as 0.34. Remember, this is not the same as the Poisson ratio along that's associated with the y extraction, so it's not the same as nu yx. Okay, um, right, so now I'd like to go ahead and ultimately determine the strains for a given state of stress which is described by um, sigma x equals 400 MPa, um, sigma y equals 12 MPa. We're imposing a larger stress along the x direction because the material I know can sustain a higher stress along that direction and a shear stress which is equal to 15 MPa. And the question is find the strain. Okay? The strain is indicated as a vector. Uh, here it will be only 3 by 1 because the z direction is not there. So in other words, when I want to solve this problem, um, I will relate the components of strain to stress only through x, y, z. So the Normal components are above, shear components are below. That's equal to a portion of the compliance matrix that only has to do with stresses um, and strains along x, y, z, along x and y. 
sorry. So that's the way it's going to look. So the normal stresses are sigma x and sigma y. This is tau xy. So I'm assuming that the stresses associated with z, as I said, I'm omitting them, they are zero. That's what I assume they are. Okay. So what goes here according to what we've said so far is, so I need to take this as a reference and I'm going to only in extract everything that has to do with x and y. So this portion I need and essentially this portion I need. Everything else I can drop from the analysis. So here what will go is simply minus new y x over e y and here I will have minus new x y over e x. Those are the off diagonal components. Here I have zeros and here I have 1 over g x y, here 1 over e x and 1 over e y. That's the way the equation looks now. This here it's epsilon which I'm trying to find out for a given state of stress indicated through sigma and what's in between is the compliance in this two-dimensional setting. Okay. So here, let me write that sigma z is equal to um, tau zx is equal to tau zy is equal to zero. And I'm only interested in the strains which arise within the xy plane. Um, so, well, um, if I have that structure now, then I can easily write the components of the strain. Epsilon x is going to be equal to 1 over e x sigma x minus nu y x over e y multiplying sigma y, 0 multiplying tau x y, and therefore there is no such contribution. Then epsilon y is minus nu x y divided by e x multiplying sigma x plus 1 over e y sigma y no contribution from shear stress and gamma x y is equal to 1 over g x y tau x y. So in this problem two of the parts they are easy to solve so first of all tau x y is provided g x y is provided and therefore I can immediately go ahead and make those substitutions and you would find that gamma x y is equal to 0 0.00714. Um, moreover, new x y is provided, e x, e y, sigma x, sigma y are provided, so you can go ahead and make those substitutions as well and you would find that epsilon y is equal to about 0 0.00039 okay or 390 micro strains if you like and on the other hand um, in order to calculate epsilon x I need the value of sigma x which I have sigma y which I have e x and e y I do have but I don't know what new y x is okay um, now, you can extract the value of new yx. How? Well, I know that new yx, if you want, I'll put the minus sign as well. I know that this matrix is symmetric, so minus new yx divided by ey is equal to minus new xy over ex. And here now, I know the value of xy, ex, and ey, and therefore you can calculate new yx to be approximately 0 0.044 which is very very close to zero almost like there is no Poisson effect right and which is very very different from new xy so they are not equal but really you don't need to calculate that value uh, as soon as you know essentially this ratio you know that this ratio is going to be the same due to symmetry so you don't have to extract it I've done so for the purposes of instruction Okay. So, and if you do that, you can eventually write the value or you use this value for new yx and you can find that the value of epsilon x is equal to 0 
five two one, which completes the analysis. So here, what is important is to always keep in mind the form of the compliance matrix or to be able to deduce it from the more general form, making the appropriate simplifications towards our 2D setting and then always, always remembering that it is symmetric and being able to make use of that information to complete the analysis.